everyone, this is Ms. Moffitt from Across the Litiverse, and I'm celebrating Canada's 150th birthday by adding more great reading to your TBR pile. You are welcome in advance. On July 1st, Canada turns the big 1-5-0, so naturally, as a reader, I've chosen a bookish way to celebrate. Earlier this month, I profiled 10 amazing LGBTQ Canadian authors in honor of Pride Month and Canada Day, and now I'm setting my sights on Canadian science fiction and fantasy authors. Without further ado, here are 10 Canadian SFF authors that every geek must read. Number 1. William Gibson William Gibson is a speculative fiction author and essayist, and he's largely credited with pioneering the sci-fi subgenre, cyberpunk. Cyberpunk features stories that combine advanced tech and science achievement with a breakdown or radical change in the social order. He's best known for his book Neuromancer, which was the first novel to win the Nebula Award, the Philip K. Dick Award, and the Hugo Award. In Neuromancer, a clever data thief named Case is recruited in a last chance run to take down an unthinkably powerful artificial intelligence orbiting the Earth, which is in service of the sinister Tessier Ashpool business clan. You know, just an average day. If you like cyberpunk, this book is the reason you like it. Number 2, Joe Walton. If you've got a taste for Arthurian fantasy and fairy literature, then Joe Walton's got you covered on both fronts. If you'd like to start with Walton, I'd recommend you check out her book Among Others, which is a dark and compelling tale about a young woman struggling to escape a troubled childhood and an ancient enchantment. Not to mention trying to escape a half-mad mother who can kind of bend spirits to dark ends and stuff. If you like Arthurian tales, her first two novels, The King's Peace and The King's Name, will treat you to that medieval flavor and add an ass-kicking warrior woman to the mix as well. Number 3, Charles Delint. Charles DeLint is a fantasy author with a knack for urban fantasy, contemporary magical realism, and mythic fiction. He's also influenced a generation of new fantasy authors in Canada, so you're in good hands here. DeLint's unique in that he a crafted an entirely fictitious and fantastical North American city called Newford, and b the series is non-sequential, so you can actually jump in at any point you want. A good one to check out first is Dreams Underfoot. Not only is this the first Newford book, it also showcases the breadth of his work, both the light and the dark. Number four, Four, Nalo Hopkinson. Nalo Hopkinson is a speculative fiction author and editor whose work is heavily influenced by Afro-Caribbean stories and Western fairy tales and folklore. I'd recommend you check out her novel Midnight Robber. The book starts off during carnival time on the Caribbean colonized planet of Toussaint. Masked midnight robbers waylay revelers with brandish weapons and spellbinding words. To the young Tantan, -tan, the robber queen is simply a favorite costume to wear at the festival until her power corrupted father commits an unforgivable crime. Eventually, the seven-year-old must reach into the heart of the myth and become the robber queen herself. Definitely a compelling and refreshing book for sci-fi readers around the globe. Number 5, Guy Gabriel Kay. Guy Gabriel Kay is a fantasy author whose fictional realms resemble real places during actual historical times, such as Constantinople during the reign of Justinian I, or the Viking invasions during the reign of Alfred the Great. I'll pick an oddball though and recommend Under Heaven, a tale about the 8th century Tang dynasty leading up to the Anshi Rebellion. This was his first book set outside of a fantasy European or Mediterranean setting. In recognition of his service to the Emperor of Kitai, Shen Tai is given a mysterious and dangerous gift. 250 Sardian horses. Wisely, the gift comes with the stipulation that the horses must be claimed in person. Otherwise, he would probably be dead already. Number 6, Tanya Huff. Tanya Huff is one of the most prominent Canadian authors writing contemporary fantasy, and she shares a few similarities with Charles DeLint from earlier on this list. Tanya Huff is a prolific author who's written everything from horror to romantic fantasy, from comedy to space operas. She's definitely got at least one book you'll love. If you love The Dresden Files, then you need to check out Huff's Blood Books, which follows Victoria Vicky Nelson, a former police officer with failing eyesight, and Henry Fitzroy, a vampire and writer of historical romances. An odd couple, yes, which makes it so very enjoyable. Number 7, Hiromi Goto. Hiromi Goto straddles two worlds with her fiction. On one hand, she writes vivid depictions of life in Canada, and on the other hand, she crafts fantastical, mythical worlds to get lost in. For the sake of this video, I'll focus on the second side of her authorial persona. In her book Half World, Goto opened the door to epic genre bending fantasy as she combined a coming-of-age tale with a spiritual quest. Melanie Tamaki is human, but her parents aren't. They're from Halfworld, a limbo between our world and the afterlife, and her father is still there. When her mother disappears, Melanie must follow her to Halfworld, and neither of them may return alive. If there are yokai in this book, I am so on board. Number 8, Robert J. Sawyer. Robert J. Sawyer is the Hugo and Nebula award-winning science fiction author of 23 books. His work focuses on common themes, including the exploration of science and religion. 
Origin, Hacking the Human Mind, The Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and Mortality. His best known series, and an excellent place to start, is his WWW trilogy, which follows Caitlin Dechter, a young blind teenager who's given a new vision transplant that accidentally allows her to see the internet. She comes across WebMind, a self aware consciousness that's growing and evolving on the internet, and naturally, governments are worried about this being's potential to do harm. I do love that fine line that exists between humans and artificial intelligence, and getting it in a YA package is all the better. Number 9, Kelly Armstrong. Kelly Armstrong is first and foremost a fantasy author, but she's also written some crime novels as well. She's best known for her Women of the Otherworld series, which explores the lives of werewolves, witches, sorcerers, neuromancers, and vampires trying to fit in as normal in today's world. While the narrators change from book to book, some of these characters will appear in other novels as well. In this case, I favor starting with the beginning of the series, so I'd recommend you start with Bitten. Elena Michaels is the only known female werewolf, but she grows tired of pursuing rogue werewolves and trying to control her temper and violence. She decides to leave her pack and live in Toronto as a human, but her pack leader calls in a favor which forces Elena to try and quell an uprising. Urban fantasy in a true Canadian setting? I can't argue with that. And number 10, Cory Doctorow. Cory Doctorow is a science fiction author whose work explores themes ranging from digital rights management to file sharing to post-scarcity economics. His first novel, Down and Out in the Magic Kingdom, was the first novel circulated under one of the Creative Commons licenses. This allowed readers to circulate the electronic edition of the book for free, as long as they neither made money from it nor created derived works from it. If you'd like to check out Doctorow, you might want to start with Little Brother. It's about four teenagers in San Francisco who, following a terrorist attack, must defend themselves against the Homeland Security's attacks on the Bill of Rights. The novel is available for free on Dr. O's website under a Creative Commons license, keeping it accessible and remixable for all. I've left a link in the description below as well. Again, this is not an exhaustive list, but it's a good place to start for viewers new to Canadian SFF. If you have any other authors to recommend, leave a comment below and I'll check them out. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button to support this channel. As always, thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe for more videos from across the Litiverse. On that note, signing off.